Welcome to the second week of Checkerboard Chat. Uh, this is Trenton Duffer, sports editor at the Daily Beacon. Um, Rob Harvey, our assistant sports editor, is not with us today. He is uh, back home celebrating the long weekend. Uh, so I'm joined today by Tyler Wombles. He's a contributor here, and um, he's a freshman student, and he's worked his way up to um, the staff writer position. So, uh, Tyler, just introduce yourself to the people. Oh, thanks, Trent, and I'm Tyler Wombles. I've been put on the track and field beat at the Daily Beacon, but I sort of just cover everything. I've covered a lot of soccer recently, and uh, just happy to be here. Awesome. So, Tyler, being a freshman, last night was your first game uh, that you've ever attended. Uh, well, as a yeah, as a student, I mean, right. um, just kind of just talk about that. Just how was the experience? Uh, just Tell me about it. Well, I mean, it's always a great experience when you're in Neyland Stadium. Um, I didn't get to sit in the student section. I had to actually uh, buy a regular ticket, mm. but that was okay. You're surrounded by Vol Nation anywhere you are, and um, it was great. I mean, the game mm-hmm. obviously was – some parts of it were tough to watch, but I think that uh, it was just a great experience. Yeah, uh, Butch Jones announced on Friday that all 14,000 student tickets had sold out. Um, I want to say – that I saw somewhere it was not 14,000, but 13,700 or something along those mm-hmm. lines. But, yeah, he announced that all of them were sold out. So uh, when did you get that ticket? Uh, when where, Like, where were you sitting? Oh, I was right, like, on the scoreboard. I was yeah. right underneath the scoreboard, so I was up pretty top. I actually, I was put on the waiting list for oh. the first ticket, and they actually yeah. offered me one. So I could have got one, but me and my roommate had already got, uh, mm-hmm. had got regular tickets. So. Yeah. I just chilled with that, but that was that was good. It was it was a great time. Yeah, so a uh, bit of a doozy of a game. It was last night. Um, just a quick recap for those who don't know: um, the Vols beat Appalachian State last night, twenty to thirteen in overtime. Uh, Appalachian State got the ball first, and when they went to punt, punted it to Cam Sutton, and Cam Sutton immediately fumbled it. Uh, it was picked up by App State and at about the forty, about the Vols' forty yard line. And a few plays later, they had scored, and it was seven to nothing, with you know still ten minutes left in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of everything kind of seemed everybody kind of seemed worried at that point a little bit. Like they weren't like freaking out yet. Mm-hmm. But you know when App State took that seven to nothing lead, I think everybody kind of you know freaked out. What was the what was the crowd like at that point? Uh, well, when Sutton fumbled, there was a huge just sort of outcry from the crowd, which mm-hmm. is understandable. Um, I don't think we lost momentum at that point. I think that mm-hmm. when they scored that touchdown after that turnover, that's when the fans started to get a little bit shaken. Um, and obviously throughout the game, we never led, or the Tennessee never led until yeah the touchdown uh, until the final the final score. Mm-hmm. So I think that um, I think that uh, the Vol Nation was a little bit shaken throughout the game, but. We did eventually get some momentum back near the end. Yeah, and later in that first quarter, uh, Appalachian St- or not Appalachian State, I'm sorry, uh, Tennessee uh, kicked that. Uh, what was it? Like a 30-yard field goal, I believe. Aaron Medley. Uh, first points of the season. Yeah, first points of the season made it seven-three. Um, but Appalachian State they jumped right back uh, fairly quickly, um, scored another touchdown, but missed the extra point, and that extra point actually went on to hurt them. And uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later. But made it thirteen to three, and then Medley would hit another field goal from I want to say it was forty yards, and it it um, made it thirteen to six. So it's thirteen to six at this point, and I believe it's the third quarter, and it's thirteen to six. What's what was the crowd? Uh, what was the reaction of the crowd at that point? Were like what were the people around you? How were they acting? Well, before that, it was there was just a lot of silence. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, like I said, I think Vol Nation was really shocked. I think a lot of the fans were just sort of stunned because this wasn't supposed to happen to Tennessee. But once we scored that touchdown and once, you know, Tennessee sort of got in a bit of a groove, a bit more momentum, uh, a lot of the fan base sort of perked up. Mm-hmm. And they really just uh, – they gave helped give momentum to the team by their just yelling and chanting and all that. So I think that helped out the team a lot. Yeah, and it was uh, about, about – 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Um, Josh Dobbs dropped back, tossed a long 67-yard touchdown pass to Josh Malone. It was just perfect. Just hit him you know, right here in the chest. It was a beautiful play. It was. It was a really, really nicely drawn-up play. And you know, the, the extra point from Medley made it, uh, tied it up 13-13. Uh, 
were you surprised to see them go long, or do you think that's something they need to do more this season? I was a bit surprised at the time because mm-hmm. I think that over the – obviously over the off season, you yeah. know, Butch Jones and the other coordinators have been talking about how Dobbs has improved his long game passing because that was a struggle for him last season was his mm-hmm. medium long range passing. I was surprised because before that, they had not thrown the ball deep, I don't think, at all. Mm-mm. And so no, I don't think they had. It was a surprise to me because even though they had talked about that, uh, anyone watching the game had not really seen that before it happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, But it worked out very well for Tennessee, and it was a, one of the highlight plays. It was, and like you said, you know, Dobbs really didn't – he didn't test out his arm, I mean, much at all. I think he finished – I want to say it was 25. He had 25 passes and uh, somewhere it? around those lines. Was like, yeah. And uh, Jalen Hurd finished with, I believe, 24 rushes for, you know, 119 or so yards. Pretty good stats. So, I mean, yeah, those are good stats. But at the same time, you know, a lot of Dobbs' passes weren't, like, downfield. No. You know, they were within 10 yards. And I feel I feel like he really has to test him his arm out if – the Vols are going to really make any noise in the playoffs this year. Uh, but the game tied at 13-all, uh, went into overtime, um, where Appalachian State decided to defer and give the Vols the ball first. Um, Vols stormed right down the field, and Dobbs got to about the four-yard line and uh, rolled out to his right and went up to dive in to get into the end zone and fumbled the ball. Oh, and everybody kind of – I think everybody's heart stopped oh, at that man. point. Oh, man. It was crazy around where I was. Mm-hmm. Everyone was looking up at the video board. Yeah. Man, it was it was intense. Yeah, but uh, luckily Jalen Hurd landed on the ball. He did. So, uh, and Eli Wolf, there's actually a picture in the Daily Beacon um, of Dobbs going up to dive, and you kind of see Eli Wolf like frantically uh, look at the ball, and, you know, you can just kind of see – like you can't see his face, but you can just kind of see him – um, looked towards the ball and it was on the ground and Jalen Hurd thankfully jumped on it in, in time uh, to get it and score six for the Vols. Uh, made it 20-13 to 13. and the defense made a great stop there at the end. Uh, they didn't, I don't think they allowed a first down, did they? They didn't, did no, they? No, I don't think no. they did, no. No, yeah, because that was the point. Uh, uh, myself and Rob Harvey were down on the field and getting ready to go into the um, the media center to do press conferences and stuff, and uh, so yeah, that last play was, it was, it, it really, it really got to the nerves of everybody. I think everybody was just kind of shaken after that, but it, it was good to see the Vols uh, pick up the win. I know it was, it was challenging, but it was a, it was a win all in the same. And it was. Butch Jones said that, you know, he, he media did. talking to the media, he said, you know, a win is a win. You know, I'm never going to apologize for a win. He said. Uh, so that was it was good to see them pull that one out. Uh, the quarterback play was I felt from Dobbs just we discussed it a little bit like he didn't really test out his arm. He didn't. He, no. he had a lot of short passes, a lot of like, inaccurate passes, and he 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 couldn't escape with his legs. Like he's always been able to you know if the if the pocket is collapsing he's always been able to roll right roll left. And you know, make the play with his legs, and I feel like last night he just couldn't do that. He finished with uh, negative four rushing yards. It's the first time he's ever had negative rushing yards in his career. Um, were there any fans around you kind of talking about that about Dobbs? Oh, there were a few. There were a few just talking about. You know, I heard a few uh, cries for Quentin Dormady, obviously the backup quarterback. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that. There was actually um, during the second quarter we. Uh, from the press box, we were looking down at the Vols sideline, and uh, it looked like Dormady was throwing a little bit. I don't, I don't want to read too much into that, and I'm definitely not gonna, you know, say anything that points towards Dobbs getting benched at all. Um, but Dormady was throwing a little bit on the sidelines, and I kind of, I kind of wondered, you know, is this gonna be? Could th- could we be seeing Quentin Dormady in the second half? Um, Dobbs finished with, I, I want to, I believe it was nearly 200 yards through the air. He had an interception. Uh, he had a touchdown. He had a passing touchdown to Malone that we talked about. And 
I mean, what, what's your opinion on Dobbs? Uh, you're a freshman, you know. You I want just good good to have a freshman's uh, perspective on things. I think that Josh Dobbs is a very talented quarterback. I mm-hmm. think he has a lot of talent as an athlete and as yeah. a runner. My qualm with Josh Dobbs is that his passing has never been, I believe, up to par of the hype that he has received. Over the offseason, a lot of people were talking about Josh Dobbs as the second best quarterback in the SEC behind mm-hmm. Ole Miss's Chad Kelly, maybe even the best. I think that he has the talent and ability to get to that point. Mm-hmm. But he has to be able to throw consistently. You watch teams like Clemson's Deshaun Watson, yeah, uh, Chad Kelly for Ole Miss, you have to have that consistent passing attack every year, every game. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Dobbs has ever really shown that. He's had bursts of you know Georgia game last season yeah. where he can do it. But last night we didn't see it. We only saw it on really the one, the one touchdown pass. And I think that – I don't think that the – Alarms are on yet for Dormady to come in, mm-hmm. but I think Dobbs should definitely be on the hot seat. We, for this team to be successful and have a chance to go to the SEC championship, Dobbs has to get his passing better. Or we've got mm-hmm. to find someone who can do it. Yeah, and that's that's interesting. You know that you know you believe that Dobbs is on the hot seat. I know there there are some people that believe you know that maybe you let Dobbs step back, but. Ultimately, I don't think it'll ever come to that. I think Dobbs is gonna, he's gonna have to struggle a lot more than he did last night. I feel for them to ever even consider, you know, benching him for what a set amount of time. Um, <clears throat> now the running back situation last night, it was it was good. Like I said, Hurd had 24 rushes for I believe 119 yards. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really all there was. Like I think uh, Alvin Kamara got nine touches for about twenty-one yards. So, I, Butch has talked all off season about how he has three good running backs: uh, D- Jalen Hurd, Alvin Kamara, and John, John Kelly. Kelly. And he didn't he didn't test out any of them really last night. He did. I mean, he did, he ran Hurd. All you know, all night. Even got some boos from the fans at one point uh, from running herd too much. Kamara got those nine touches, but we really didn't see anything else from him. And John Kelly didn't even make an appearance. And I know that you can argue, well, it was a close game. You didn't want to put in the third string running back when you know it's a close game like that. But at the same time, you've really got to be able to you know get a fresh, get some fresh legs in there because I feel like it really will provide, I guess, a spark. It can, Well, it can provide a spark to your offense. Because, you know, you're running the same guy, you know, 24 times. They're eventually going to pick up on that guy. And, you know, what, what do you think about it? I think that was um, a criticism of Butch Jones last season. Mm-hmm. He plays conservative. He likes his run game. He likes what he has in Jalen Hurd. And I don't blame him for liking what he has in Jalen Hurd. Yeah. The guy is – one of the best running backs in the SEC. Yeah. But I think in this sort of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, you have to be a little bit more aggressive, Mm -hmm. not only with the passing game, but Alvin Kamara gives you a change of pace. He's a speedy guy. I think Jalen Hurd is the guy that should take the majority of the reps. Mm -hmm. But you've got to get Kamara in there to have UT's, you know, three-headed monster that's been talked about in the offseason of Josh Dobbs, Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurd, and Alvin Kamara. Yeah, and – you know, even adding John Kelly to that mix can, mm-hmm. you know, provide a nice, you know, change of pace. I know a lot of people have said that, you know, I think Rob mentioned it last week how John Kelly was like, you know, a younger Alvin Kamara. And Kamara, he's not, you know, he's he's quick, but he's not a little dude. He's well, oh. he, he is like height wise. He's five ten, but you know, I think I think the last time I read, he was like two hundred ten pounds. So I mean, he's a pretty you know, beefy guy. Yeah. And he runs hard. And he, he does, really does. Run He's hard. speedy, but he reminds me a little bit of uh, Walter Payton. Mm-hmm. That type of, you know, mainly a speed back, but he can run <clears throat> run through people and he will yeah. not just g- go down once he gets contacted. Yeah, and I just, I feel like they need to use Kamara more if they're going to take that extra step and uh, become a championship team. I agree. Um, Receiver-wise... There really wasn't anything that you can judge. Um, no. 
Jason Kroom, the backup tight end, was in street clothes on the field. He did not play last night at all. A lot of people were looking forward to getting him in there uh, behind Ethan Wolf to kind of play in the slot, and Kroom didn't come in at all last night. Um, not really sure why uh, that happened. But receiver-wise, I mean, Malone had the long catch. Preston Williams looked impressive at the start. He I did. Mean, he was a favorite of Dobbs. For, he caught a few passes in succession, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he got uh, his first six targets. I think he had four catches for, I think, 36 yards through his first six targets. Uh, so it was it was impressive to see, you know, Dobbs drop back and make that, you know, that 10, 15-yard pass. And if he would do that more, I mean, the Vols have talent at receiver. They do. I mean, they, they have so many people – I discussed this last week. You know, Butch has said that he wants eight to ten, you know, depth wise at receiver, and he has that. And I just don't think that he's taking advantage of it because I mean, Preston Williams, Jawan Jennings uh, got hurt a little bit, I believe, in the second quarter. He laid a hard block and went out, you know, tapping his head. But you know, you've got Jennings, you've got Tyler Bird. Mm-hmm. You've got Jeff George if it comes down to it. I mean, you've got all these receivers that you can, you know, throw to, but they just they'd rather not throw, and I understand that. Um, well, when you have inconsistencies in your passing game, as yeah. we were saying earlier, I think that it makes mm-hmm. it tough for a wide receiver to get in the game. Mm-hmm. But I do think they should open it up a little more because you're right. We do have talent. We mm-hmm. have. We have Jawan Jennings. We have uh, Preston Williams. Josh Malone obviously had a great game last night. I think that was one uh, issue with the season last year was that we had a lot of talent at receiver, but they really weren't able to get it going. We didn't have many players who had great receiving stats. Yeah, and the main concern last night was the offensive line. It was. And that's a lot of, I believe, the quarrel of where people believe that, you know, the Vols had problems. (laughs) They couldn't get anything going on the ground and through the air and even with Dobbs you know running like he usually does you know they couldn't get anything going because of the offensive line and you know I'm not shouldering the blame at all on the offensive line there was a lot of factors that played into the you know just barely squeaking by in that win last night but the offensive line Coleman Thomas really got I'll say manhandled he did by that nose tackle and the nose, t- and he wasn't even that big of a guy. I think that I think he I think the depth chart said that he was like 260 pounds or something. So he's not a big guy, and you you're gonna have some 300 plus pounders with Alabama, with Florida, with Georgia, and Texas A and M will have Miles Garrett. They may put him at the nose tackle of player two, you know. And if you're Coleman Thomas, and if you're the entire offensive line, you've really got to put your focus. <laughs> Well, there was, especially at the time, you know, Josh Dobbs got sacked several mm-hmm. times. Yeah. And that's why he had such a low rushing number because, obviously, in yeah. college football, you know, it counts against your rush total when you get sacked. Yeah. Um, there were several people talking about it. Um, the main sentiment I heard mm-hmm. was that, like you said, there's got to be some concern because if Appalachian State's defensive line did this to our offensive line, yeah. What is the line of Texas A&M yeah. or Alabama, who almost always has a stout uh, defensive line? Yeah. What are they going to do to us if we can't get this figured out? Yeah, and Alabama, like like you said, Alabama's defense is always just, you know, going 150%, always fighting hard to, you know, get to the quarterback. And the Vols have a lot of issues at offensive line that they really need to – uh, talk about you talked about Dobbs getting sacked. He got sacked. Uh, I, I believe it was only twice that they registered it as registered registered it. Sorry, I can't talk um, as a sack. But uh, yeah, that only happened twice. But he was pressured just so many times. There were so many times, like the play where he threw the interception. Mm-hmm. You know, there they rushed three on the just three. They rushed three players. Appalachian State did, and. You know, there were three players in the backfield by the time Dobbs dropped back to pass. You know, four second, three, four seconds, and, you know, there's three players in the backfield. And I just don't think that you can do that if you're if you're Tennessee. You can't. You really have to clean up uh, that aspect. On the opposite side of the ball, um, 
the defensive line played fairly. I, f- I believe they played pretty well. I think um, that was one bright spot of the game. Yeah. Uh, there were no sacks, which really surprised me because – Appalachian State really like their offensive line is not. I mean, they're big, but they're not you know menacing uh, by any means. So it was really surprising not to see Derek Barnett get in there and get the sack uh, on a lot of plays. Because I know there was one play in particular where he just he shot. It looked like he was shot out of a cannon running off that left side. So I, I was kind of shocked to see that with with the depth that that defensive line has. It was kind of shocking. You know, see no sacks. I mean, they pressured the quarterback most of the night, but Appala- you got to really uh, praise uh, Appalachian State's quarterback for, you know, getting the ball, like throwing the ball away. If, like, he had the interception, but, mm. I mean, granted, that was an incredible interception by Cam Sutton. It was, yes. You know, diving to catch that ball. Um, so the defensive line really played, I believe, well. They did. We didn't see any of Shy Tuttle. I don't believe we saw Alexis Johnson out there. Even I don't, though no, I don't think he played. I don't think he did. Um, so we didn't see Tuttle or Johnson. Butch said on uh, Wednesday that both of those players were available. He did. Uh, he said they would. He said mm-hmm. they would play. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he said they would play particularly, but he did say that they were available and that he would look to see, um, you know, if they were if it was, if they were able to go. Um, I know Butch has always talked about the flow of the game, and that's really what he talks about when he says when he doesn't play players that people are like, oh, why didn't you play this guy? Oh, why didn't you play that guy? Butch will say, you know, oh, the flow of the game, and and that's fine. That's all fine and dandy. But you also the flow of the game, you know, that's that's a thing completely different from you know playing one guy over another guy. I think if you if you mix things up, it really ke- it keeps teams it keeps the opposing team kind of you know rattled. You don't know they don't know what you're planning. They don't know what you're going to do next. So I, I think the flow of the game needs to change a little bit uh, in that aspect. Uh, the big another big item that we've yet to talk about was Jalen Reeves Maben mm. um, getting ejected in the first quarter for targeting. Uh, Honestly, this is just my opinion. I think it was a bogus call. Uh, I didn't see any targeting on the play. I'm not an official by any means, um, but I, I didn't see any targeting on the play that re- that resulted that would you know result in a, disqual- a disqualification. Well, uh, a lot of Tennessee fans in the stands with me felt the same way, Trent. Oh yeah. Uh, Oh, it yeah. was. I think it was a really close play. Um, obviously, college football officials have been mm-hmm. really, they've been really harsh on that with all the concussion yeah. stuff that has been going on. I did. I agree with you. I did not think he should have been ejected. I think it was a pretty clean hit. I think it was more of a, his shoulder than his head. Yeah. But that's college football nowadays. <laughs> and if you're Tennessee, you have to have that next guy come in. You have to have. Yeah. You have to step up. I think you said uh, Cortez, Cortez McDowell came yeah. in for Mabin, and you know you have to have those guys ready to come in and step up if those things are going to happen to your team. Yeah, and McDowell, he really he came in and he did a good job. He he really he really did a, a good job. He, I think he finished with uh, nine tackles, which was the team high. So he finished with a team high for tackles, coming in for you know a captain, you know that defensive captain beside Cam Sutton. So it was really interesting. And you know it 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 really was good to see a player like that come in uh, for uh, I'm sorry for Jalen there when he got ejected. Um, the defensive backs I felt played really well uh, last night. I think so. I think they do. Uh, uh, Micah Abernathy. Abernathy. Abernathy really impressed me yeah. personally. He was he was all over the field. I've watched a, f- a few highlights of the game. Uh, since last night, and Abernathy was all over the field, and I can see why coaches have been talking about him so highly this off season. Is because you know he's he's a great safety uh, nickel back type of player, and I think he'll really play a, a nice part for the Vols this season. And of course, we mentioned the Cam Sutton interception, uh, diving in front of that ball, kind of you know testing. Appalachian State's quarterback to make the throw, and of course he did, and it was really it was a it was a good interception. Um, 
So next week, Vols have the battle at Bristol uh, against Virginia Tech. Jerry Caldwell, uh, who is the general manager at Bristol, said yesterday in the press box that uh, the game was, he expected the game to be sold out. He said the grandstands are completely sold out and that there are a few uh, premier tickets left. Um, So definitely, if you want to go to that game, definitely check that out. Um, What do you think is the storyline for that game? Well, I think... Obviously, the biggest storyline is what are the balls going to do? Mm-hmm. I mean, last night, my personal score prediction for last night was 59-17. and 17. Yeah, That may have been a little outlandish, but I don't think so because most experts mm-hmm. had their predictions with the balls winning about 30 or more points. Yeah, And when you go to overtime with a team from the Sun Belt, I know Appalachian State, they're, now, they're a very good team. They were, what, mm-hmm. 11-2 and two last season? Yeah. But what are, what is Tennessee going to do? Most Vol fans and experts – Thought that Tennessee was gonna be, was gonna ha- have a bl- the blowout win under their belt, and mm-hmm. was gonna be going in there with a lot of momentum. And I feel like right now for Tennessee, they have a lot more questions than answers. And I think it'll be interesting to see how are they gonna take that, and how are they gonna prepare this week yeah. for that game in college football's biggest stage. Yeah, and I had the Vols winning forty five. I believe it was forty five seventeen myself. So it was definitely you know kind of strange to see them just you know, barely pull out that 20-13 to 13 win. But, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, this is this is literally the biggest college football game in history. It is. I mean, there's going to be a, over 160,000 there. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see. And if you're going to the game as a student, uh, be responsible, be safe, uh, because it's going to be like, – you think Neyland Stadium is bad with 102, you know, add another 60,000 to mm-hmm. that. It's going to be – just crazy pandemonium. Tons of emotion. Tons of emotion. And um, there is going to be alcohol allowed at this game. So take that, you know, put that in your mind whenever you're um, trying to leave. Remember to watch out for not only, you know, yourself, but for everybody else too. Uh, so I believe that's all we have time for today. Um, thank you so much for coming back to our second week of Checkerboard Chat. We'll be back again next week. Um, be sure to check out uh, the Beacon Under Five podcast. Definitely, yeah, it's a great podcast with Altov. He's he's it's a great, great. He's doing great uh, with multimedia this year. Um, both of those, the both uh, Beacon Under Five and Checkerboard Chat are on iTunes. So be sure you check those out. And I believe they're both on SoundCloud as well. And uh, the Checkerboard Chat uh, talks are on YouTube as well. So definitely go and uh, check those out. You can visit our website at www.utdailybeacon.com. And um, Altoff has also done a few live streams on Facebook, so check out our Facebook. Check out our Twitter. Just check it all out. We're we're a very um, advanced student media outlet, I believe, here at the University of Tennessee. And Tyler, thank you so much for coming on. We'll, Thanks for having uh, me, Trent. We'll try to bring you on next week. Next week we will have another guest, another sports beacon writer, So be sure to check that out next week. This is Trenton Duffer, sports editor, signing off.